Hi, this is Dr. Ogden again. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at the tr branch on the tree of life of the domain Eukarya. So we'll be quickly running through the major kingdoms in the, in the domain Eukarya. And first, we're going to start off with the protists. So protists are eukaryotic organisms, meaning they have cells that are eukaryotic cells with a true nucleus and everything. And it's clear that they this type of a cell evolved from a prokaryotic ancestor, like we saw in the previous lecture concerning sim endosymbiotic theory. But from this, these early protists, also all of the other um, kingdoms in the eukaryotes were also derived. So some of the protists that we have on this planet are called protozoans, and they are mainly the protists that live by ingesting food. Some of these are, are grouped into the, a large group of protists named the flagellates. And these are a group of organisms that have flagella that come off them and help propel them through um, the medium in which they live. This is an example of the flagella uh, giardia, which is, of course, something uh, you know, that you've heard of if you've ever heard of drinking dirty water in the mountains or something like that. Um, other protists that I'm sure that you've heard of before are called amoebas, and these are cells that have great flexibility in their body shape, and they have these pseudopodia that can stream out and surround a food prey item and engulf the food prey item. Some amoebas are also encapsulated in hard structures and so forth, and this is a huge group. The amoebas are quite diverse. The ciliates are a group of protists that have cilia surrounding their cells that allow them to move. Sometimes the cilia can be bundled together in these structures here called cirri, C-I-R-R-I, and, um, and this allows them to move and to feed through the mediums in which they live. There's also a group um, called the algae that are part of the protists, and algae can be both unicellular, like these uh, diatoms, which have a hardened silica shell on the outside really can be quite beautiful and others are like the dinoflagellates which are these also algae but have flagella. Algae can also be colonial and a wonderful example of colonial algae is seaweed. So many people think that seaweeds are like plants but they're actually not, they're algae. Um, it's ba basically the process of convergent evolution has made seaweed look like it's a plant when in, indeed it is an algae. And of course many of these are edible and and they uh, grow off on, on the shorelines. So that, that gives a quick overview of the protists. Again, look online for additional um, information about the protists, but then we can come to the plants. Now, plants evolved about 500 million years ago, and the original plants probably came from something that looked like a, a colonial form of an algae, and, and then eventually began to evolve into more of the forms that we know today. So here's an example of a carophyte, which is a colonial type of an, uh, of a, uh, of an algae that, that resembles potentially what could have been an ancestor to all of plants. But if you look at plant diversity, so after their original or, um, evolution, then you had a, a next step in plant evolution, which was the origin of vascular tissue. So you went from things like the bryophytes, like um, mosses and so forth, to things like ferns that now have woody parts but do not produce seeds yet. Then seeds are evolved around 350, 360 million years ago and you get the first types of plants that had seeds were called naked seeded plants like the gymnosperms or pine trees and evergreens. And then it wasn't only until about 140 million years ago that, we, that flowering plants evolved. So the next group that we're going to look at are the fungi. And fungi are also very diverse. You have some that actually look like mushrooms that you're used to, but then there's the others that are mold. There's even some fungi that are predatory, like this little predatory fungus right here that surrounds a roundworm, holds it until it dies, and then as it uh, decays away, it feeds off of the decaying tissue. Um, yeast are also a form of fungi. So really a diverse group. And fungi are actually more closely related to um, to animals than they are to plants, even though for many years uh, they were classified as being more closely related to plants than to animals, but that is not the case. Also, some of the fungi that we use for you know our foods, like blue cheese and mushrooms, of course, that we eat, and even truffles. Fungi have also been an important part in the biomedical field. 
when uh, it was discovered that this particular fungi right here, penicillium, had the ability to fight off um, certain types of bacteria. So here's a Staphylococcus bacteria. This is the type of bacteria that causes staph uh, infections. And it shows that the penicillium here can inhibit the growth of this bacterium. So now many of our antibiotics, of course, are derived from fungi. And finally, animals. Animals are always eukaryotic and multicellular, and for the most part, they're heterotrophic, which means they ingest their food inside of their bodies.